Welcome everyone to this perspective drawing tutorial. In this video, we will be drawing this building in two points perspective. How's it going everyone? I hope you're all doing good. So we are going to be drawing another Japanese building today. And like always, let's start by establishing the horizon line. In this example, it will be across the center of the page. And if you have watched many of my tutorials like this already, you'll know that the next step is to block out the building by drawing some boxes. Here I'm going to draw a box that is rather tall in height but not that wide and to the side of it at the back I'm going to draw a smaller box that is about half the height of the bigger one. Now seeing as I am working in two points perspective here it means that I will have to place two vanishing points. One vanishing point will be to the right and one will be to the left. Both of these in this example are off the page, which means that I have to estimate the convergence of my lines. If you are interested in learning more about the general principles of perspective drawing, then do consider watching my complete perspective drawing series after this video. Also, it might be worth me noting that in two points perspective, all of my lines will be directed to a vanishing point, except the vertical lines. So as I draw out these two boxes, I extend my lines to the edge of the page and I also draw through the boxes, giving me a, a better sense of their form. And by blocking out these boxes, we are already establishing the building's position in perspective or our position as the viewer. Remember, the horizon line is our eye level. So I have blocked out these two boxes and now I'm going to begin adding a pitched roof to the larger box. Now to do this, I take a set of diagonal lines to each corner on the face of this box to find the centre and at the centre I draw a vertical halfway line extending this upwards to a height that I am happy with for the pitched roof. I then do the same on its back face. I now join up these two vertical lines to give me the top of the pitched roof and also from the top of these I take two lines to each corner creating a triangle at both ends. So that's how we will block in that pitched roof and now I'm going to block out a rectangular section on this building and this will be the sign for the building that's going to be extruding out. Here you can see how I do this by observing the footage on screen. Now I'm going to add a fence on top of this smaller box at the side, of course at this stage I'm not adding any detail though. So now I'd say that the main elements of the building have been blocked out and now it's a case of developing this further, outlining all of the necessary features. I'm going to begin by working on this pitched roof because I actually want this roof to overhang and so here I extend it out at the front and back as well as extending it out at the sides. Now we need to add some thickness to this roof and this means offsetting a set of lines which I will join together. And seeing as I am adding some thickness to this roof, it means that the ridge of the roof will increase in height, so I join that up as well. Now here at the side of the building, I'm going to draw two rectangular boxes which will be a set of two vending machines. I'll leave them as boxes for the moment though. At the far side of the building, there's going to be a set of stairs which we don't see much of and so here I outlined the first few as well as adding in a wall alongside them. There's one thing we are missing at the moment and you can't have a building without them, windows and doors. Here at the side of this smaller box, I'm going to outline two windows that are the same size and I do this by finding the centre of this face the same way as I did when drawing in that pitched roof at the start and then I divide up these two halves again to find the centre of these. I now know where to position both of these windows. Now at the front of the building there's going to be a larger window and so I outlined this like so. I wrap the top and bottom lines of the window at the front around the side of the building so that I can outline another window at the same height. Above this smaller section I'm going to outline a door and a window next to it. 
at the lower half of the front of this building, I add some lines at either side because here is where the main entrance to the building will be. So now I have a good idea of how this building is going to be. I have my windows and doors outlined along with the other important features. Now I'm going to rely less on the ruler as I work into this adding some detail. I'll place this stage into a time lapse so you can see how I work into all of this. Here I'm adding a lot of additional details such as a drainage pipe at the corner of the building and a small overhang to the door and window above. I do refer to a lot of images of various buildings from suburban Japan as well. I really like how these buildings appear and they are great to draw. At the top of this smaller section I outlined some plants and then I'll start to develop each of these windows, adding frames to them as well as giving them some depth. I'm just working my way around the building now, adding details as I go. This window above here will have an extruded fence around it where I draw out a ventilation unit. I think I mentioned in my previous tutorial that it's common to see these outside on buildings in Japan. Eventually I come to add some detail to these vending machines and these are also common in Japan. They are frequently in pairs like this and so I made sure to look at some reference images as I draw them out. Now I'm tasked with adding some detail to the front of this building and as I outline all of this I still need to consider the convergence of my lines. Even with the smallest of features the laws of perspective still apply and if something isn't drawn in the correct perspective it's going to stand out. It does become easier and more instinctual though, to do this the more practice that you have drawing in perspective. So now all of the drawing has been lightly outlined and because I'm happy with how this looks I'm going to work over this and make it more clear. Now at this stage you can do what you want with the drawing, you can colour it if you'd like or simply leave the line work as it is. However I always tend to render my drawings in pencil at the end of these tutorials and I'll place this stage in a time lapse. So feel free to observe this footage on screen and see how I finish this drawing off. So I have almost finished rendering this drawing but to finish this off I'm going to add some shadows and I add a darker shade where these will be. I hope that you enjoyed this perspective drawing tutorial, I do have many more on the channel but I also post a lot of additional tutorials like this on my Patreon page so do consider checking that out. With that being said, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. If you enjoyed the content I create, then do consider becoming a patron on Patreon. You will gain access to exclusive tutorials, study documents, process papers, real-time drawing footage and more. Plus, you will also be supporting me in a more personal way. Other than that, thank you for watching this video and I'll see you soon.